Hey, this is Greg Lawson, the paranormal detective. You can find me at the paranormal detective.com. Um, last few years I've been interviewed by a whole bunch of different people on radio and TV. And I thought, you know what? I need to start interviewing. I, th I, I think I find these people more interesting than, than I am. And so I thought, you know what? I'm going to start doing this. Uh, and I'm going to start interviewing my friends because uh, like Jeff Belanger says, I miss my friends. We're stuck at home and, and um, not being able to do too much. So uh, today I asked Kenna Hunter to come on and, uh, and talk with us. And Kenna and I met up in Bryan, Ohio, and she's with the RIP files and uh, she's a long time uh, uh, paranormal investigator. So please, everybody, welcome Kenna on Hi. Detective Diaries. Hey, how's it going? It's going. Yeah. Have did a, you did you happen to get an adult beverage to uh, to partake in? I do. You do. What do you got? A cheap girl wine. I you know I don't think I'm a real wine drinker. I'm stuck on Moscato's, and my real wine friends tell me that's not real wine. So it works for me though. <laughs> uh oh! Did you freeze? No. There, it froze for a minute. I'm not going, hey, there, we, there go. we go. I don't know what's going on there. That's know. never happened before. But anyway, <laughs> so uh, thanks so much for taking time out of your day to, to talk with us, talk with me. Um, you and I, uh, uh, we first met, like I said, in, in Bryan, Ohio, and, and that, that was actually a really good weekend. That was a really cool town. I'm going to go back there eventually. I really enjoyed that whole weekend. That was cool. That was my I, that was my first actual event that I did too. I was uh, I was very surprised once we got there, uh, how big the square was, and they were saying like the the town is only like five thousand people or something, but that square is huge. And yeah. then uh, and then where we stayed, the rectory and and the the church and everything was just incredible. Man, that <laughs> the. That weekend by itself was probably St. John. No, what was it called? Father John Stone to go in where we stayed. Right. Do you remember the story of what happened when I went to go say hey to you? No. You don't. Okay. That's a ghost story we'll get to tonight. I what thought I, like I saw you standing in, I saw your arm. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. It's a good story. No, go ahead. Go ahead. What? Okay. So, you know, they, they had us stay in what used to be like the, the Sunday school church. So, you know, there was like five rooms total in that little spot. And Greg has the little room at the end of the hallway. And mine was right there at the staircase. And Greg, he was just in our room talking. He had gone to his room. I guess he had gone to get in the shower. I don't know. But I had heard, I thought I heard him in his room. And I saw, I looked in the hallway, saw his door was halfway open. And I watched, I watched you reach around. I saw this entire arm and you opened the door and I was like, he opened the door weird. And I walked to your room to say hi. And there was not a single person in your room. The shower was going in the bathroom, but 100% I saw someone's arm open that door. And I was like, now I do remember that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, was, I was not in the room. That's for sure. Yeah. But also while you were standing there talking to us, we heard heavy footsteps come up the stairs twice. And after you went to your room, we went to invent, we went to go talk. There was one person there. There was not two people there. So there, right. that, that whole entire place was super active. I, I'm going to, I want to do a, a church takeover that place. Right. Yeah, that's, so uh, uh, most people that are, are listening uh, wouldn't know about this, but uh, so Father John's is uh, a brewery and a, a restaurant, right? Mm -hmm. and, and and what happened was, is it was a big church that was there. And I can't remember, was it a Methodist church, Baptist? What was it? They still do church there on Sundays. They still right. hold church. Yeah. Yeah. I bet I don't know. I just and, know. And, and so um, the, the main congregation of the church wanted to build another church, a big mega kind of church, I guess. And so they sold this old church, which was built in what, 1850 or something like that. It was 1870. I don't know. Anyway, they, they, uh, they sold this thing to a local, um, uh, entrepreneur and I believe he's a, he's a surgeon. And so he bought this church with the rectory and everything and turned it into a brew house. 
and it's fantastic. And they do, yes, uh, still do church there uh, yeah. on Sundays. I think they rent it out to do it. Speaking of brew house, I'm going to be drinking. I don't know if you can see this Kung oh, Fu yeah. Robot IPA. Where is that? Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep, you and my girl wine. Hey, Father John's had that crypt that you could that you could eat dinner over. Like the Did you see that? Yes, that's crazy. So yeah. Did did you hear the story behind that on on uh, why that was? No, do tell. Okay, so when they decided they were going to make the the brewery inside the church, the back side of the church, right? They needed to, to redirect uh, some water lines and sewer lines and things like that. And some of these things went under the church. And the church has a big basement. It's really cool. It's, when you go down there, it's like you're going into a, a castle in, in England or something. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. And, and so um, they were digging through that area and ran right into that coffin. So, oh yeah, that was a, uh, that was actually a burial site prior to, I guess, them making the main part of the church. And back then, you know, people would be buried and then they'd forget about them or whatever, and then build over them or whatever. And so when they're digging through there, they ran into that coffin and they cleared that one corner away and they decided to go ahead and leave that thing open and put that big piece of plexiglass over it. Uh, and <laughs> yeah. then they have that table that's shaped like a cross and it's suspended by chains that go to the we, we there. We sat over it and that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. It was a really cool place. I Brian, think they Ohio. Said, yeah. So I did, I do know that after they found the crypt that you can see, they said that they found six more, six more tombs or something that yeah. been looking for. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. It's a really, it's a really cool place. I, I, uh, I had a, I had a really good time. Matter of fact, uh, let's see. Yeah. Hey, there we are. Look at us. There's, uh, <laughs> Dalen and uh, who else is there? Cherry and yeah. Janet, you and me. Yep. 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 So, um, Janet is to your right between you and I. Yes. You're going to um, have to her on the show too. Yeah. How long have y'all known each other? Janet and I became best friends because of the RIP files. She actually, I want to say she came in on season three. And then we were just the best of friends since then and travel all over the place. Right. Yeah. I really loved uh, talking with y'all. Y'all had some, uh, some really cool stories and, and everything. So um, something else I have to uh, uh, throw up here. <laughs> <laughs> that was my first time ever using dowsing rods. They were, that was actually the, that was actually my trial run on the RIP files. So that was a really cool night because I hadn't really seen paranormal stuff before. I've never worked with dowsing rods. They were teaching me how to use them and stuff. And they kept saying there's like a Mr. McGee or Mr. Magoo, somebody that was known to stay in that room. And I started getting them to work. And I said, are you, are you in the room with us? And it crawl. I did that whole explain the yes and the no stuff. And the, um, where'd you go? I, I went away. It's just oh, you. Okay. <laughs> Doesn't make sense over there because my computer acted up a minute ago. No, you're um, good. Yeah, I had asked, I had asked um, Mr. Magoo, would he point to himself? And it like point, it pointed all, both of them pointed way over here. We asked, would he come talk to us? And it said yes. And then the second Malinka, the girl in the picture, she says, oh my gosh, my arm is freezing. And I said, did you move? It said yes. And I said, well, you point to where you're at. And it turned and pointed straight at her. And I was like, are these things rigged? Is it? I was not, I was like making sure not moving because I'm so skeptical about stuff. They pointed straight at her. They like everything correlated really good. So my first dowsing rod experience was I went home and bought a, a, a pair of dowsing rods and started practicing using them. I haven't used them in a while though. So you were on, you were on two seasons. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. What, what was it like? What was it like doing that stuff? Well, I guess let's, let's back up first. Okay. I was never involved in the paranormal until maybe 2013. I had something happen to me that I did not realize was paranormal until years later. So we'll start there and we'll work our way. So my husband, Eric, supposed to, oh, hi, Marley. Hi, Denise. Hi, Greta. Hi, friends. <laughs> um, 
in 2012, Eric, so Eric and I, my husband, we dated online while he was in Iraq, got married when he got home. And then this is the next appointment. Thank you very much. I like our flag too. <laughs> we have lots of flags all over the house. And y'all see that awesome picture right there? That right there is a second grade art contest winner, folks. That's <laughs> Eric coming up my second grade art contest. No. Uh, I was going to say, that's your second grade or your second that's grade? Not, no, that was me in second grade. Oh, nice. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Anyway. A big accomplishment. Okay. So, um, Eric was supposed to deploy in September and they had actually, his, his support for special forces was getting ready for the Q course and stuff. Um, they told us that I would always have like a six month notice. So he was supposed to deploy in September. They called Eric in April and said, you need to let your wife know you're leaving in 14 days. So this kid had gotten like this crazy form of arthritis or something. And they decided to pull him off the deployment. And out of all the people, they picked Eric. Well, this is, we were talking about premonitions the other night. This very first, the right. first premonition that I ever had. And I didn't realize that it was anything to, I didn't realize at the time how significant it would be or anything, but um, when we got the news that Eric was leaving in 14 days, I was, uh, I like just freaked out, but I kept, I kept having this out of place thought that was coming to me. It was like this, it would make my stomach hurt when it would come. But for the, for those two weeks that we were waiting for his deployment, I kept having this really bad feeling and out of place thought that, some, that he was going to get hurt on our anniversary. And he deployed like April 23rd, 24th, something like that. Exactly five weeks later, Eric steps on the bomb the day before our one year wedding anniversary, like hours before. And I'd actually forgot that I even said that, like that, that feeling would not go away. We were at a cookout and I told his friends, I said, something's not right about this deployment. I just keep getting this thought. It doesn't feel right. And they're like, no, don't worry about it. He's going to be fine. When they came in October, Eric stepped on the bomb, lost his right leg. May 31st, they came in October and the guys pulled me aside and they were like, you were right. And I was like, I was, I'd already forgot. I'd said that. They were like, you're right about it. You knew. And I was like, Oh my God, I jinxed my husband. And they're like, no, you knew. You just, <laughs> yeah. you just knew. So we ended up having Eric had, we lived at Watery for four years. He had 61 surgeries while he was recovering. Um, and probably 20, I think this might've been the beginning of 2014 or 2013, but it, we were just in a 700 square foot hospital room with the two of each other. They have them on all these pain medicines. It, we're just driving each other nuts. And Eric says, you need to get a hobby. You need to get out of the hospital and you need to go find something to do. That exact same day, I saw an audition for this TV show. And it was like, it was for the RIP files. And I was like, do you like the paranormal? Do you have cool experiences? experiences tell us and I wrote and I was like well I don't really have anything to tell you um I had this one crazy thing I had gone to Savannah Georgia in 2013 um after Erica got injured his brother was getting married so I was helping plan the wedding and we stayed at I did a lot of research I was like oh this place is supposed to be haunted let's do a haunted let's stay at a haunted house and at this point I'd never I'd never stayed anywhere haunted and to be honest with you, I'm scared to death of the dark. Chucky, the doll ruined my life. So, uh, you, you on the show shows that you're scared of the dark. That's why, that is why I'm on the show. I'm on the show because they know that I'm scared of everything and they think it's hilarious. They lock me in the scary places and I scream and it's funny to them. I even asked the producer, I said, what if something happens? And I'm like, drug up a wall. She's like, make sure you get it on film. <laughs> hey, I got a picture of you and uh you and Eric, I think. Uh is that all right? But that up? Yeah. That's us. Yeah. So that's where are y'all at? Oh, well, where are you at? Where, yeah, I don't know where that is. I don't know. Let's see the Washington Monument. Hmm. Yeah, if you turn the camera, we're facing the Lincoln Memorial right there. Yeah. 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 So what are y'all doing so, up there? Mm, we were helping with an organization. Uh, that was raising money for oh uh, boot campaign. They they help um, veterans and combat veterans and stuff. So okay. we were doing this big push up thing out there that day. I happened to snap, snap that pick. Um, dang it, where was that? Where was that? I don't know. 
Uh, you're talking about RIP files and, and oh, how that started. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, yeah. so I shared it. I'm a nurse. So I was like, Hey, I do have credentials, but also like there's, I scare myself more than anything else scares me. I've screamed at my shadow. I've screamed at sticks. I've stepped on sticks that broke in the night and screamed and it's only me. And I was sharing those stories and I didn't hear anything back for three months. And the exact day I was like, I didn't want to be on that stupid show. Anyways, she calls me. She called me back and she was like, Hey, we want to do a trial run. And I was like, Oh, so we ended up at that. It was an old jail. And I don't even remember where it was West Virginia. I just called it the old jail. So now I don't even remember, but that was, and the, the second um, episode we ever filmed, I saw a full body apparition. We all saw a full body, body apparition that night. That was, that was in Baltimore, Maryland, at the at the Essex Museum, Heritage Museum. Yeah. So we were standing in this hallway, and of course, so we're filming, but we're not filming. With the cameras are rolling, um, our the guy that's on our show, Mark, he's standing in front of the camera. We're just talking. The producer, Pat, her husband, Jim, is a scientist, and he likes to set up these cool experiments. So he had this he had this strobe light experiment going. It was, it's a little hallway. There's three jail cells um, and the strobe lights going. We're standing there. Our cameraman's about five foot four and the lights are flashing. Everything's off. We're getting ready to set up. And I look and I see a man standing there. And so I just look at him for a second. And then I realize there's something on his chest that I'm staring at. And I notice it's overalls and he's got, I'm going to send you the picture of the guy after this. Cause I wasn't prepared to show you, but I do have a picture of him. They brought the picture afterwards and said, is this what the guy looks like? And it's the guy, it's their resident ghost. But when we went in we weren't allowed to know any, we weren't allowed to know any evidence. We weren't allowed to know any information. They wanted to see what we would come up with. So I hadn't seen this picture. I hadn't heard about the guy. There's a man standing there and I, I, I was running my recorder. So I still have the recorder and I listen to it. It's funny because I'm like, guys, there's somebody standing there and everyone's talking amongst themselves. So no one hears me. And I'm like, guys. And then Mark turns around and says, oh, my God, there's a guy. And everyone's <laughs> crap. And I was like, no, I've been trying to tell you all there's a guy. When he screamed, I screamed. We Amelia and I ran into each other. One of us lost a nose ring. Mark had this high pitched scream and I screamed just like the cowardly lion. And none of it was only the audio got caught on film because Mark was standing in front of the camera when all of this like his back was to the camera because we weren't actually filming yet. Wow. Yeah. Oh, hey, look at that. Look who says hi. Hey, it's Janet. Janet. Hey, Janet. <laughs> you need to, you need to come on here and, uh, and talk to me sometime. She already yeah. said yes. We discussed earlier. Oh, she did. Good. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, um, so I, 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 uh, I'm like sweaty in here. I know I keep wiping my mustache, but I don't have an issue. Why are you sweaty in there? I don't know. Maybe I'm just a sweaty person. <laughs> so, um, what what was a what was the coolest uh, experience you had while you were working on RIP files? Um, my first meet the the first mediumship medium the first experience that I ever had when we go when we went into the show when I first started filming I wasn't aware of any gifts or uh, intuition I was everyone goes in and they're like we have empaths or mediums or whatever. So people pick up on stuff and I'm always the one that's like, they're like, I feel such sadness in the, this room. I feel like this happened. And I'm always the one that's like, I feel like I want some macaroni. I'm just always talking about food. I'm literally Scooby-Doo of the group. We were at this place in Ellicott City, Maryland. And there's this room that people say always bothers them. So I'm going to go in there and look at these, see if there's old timey lights or something that's letting off a lot of something that's causing people, people say that they feel uncomfortable in there. They get nauseous, they get headaches. So I'm just going to go in there and debunk it. I'm going to figure out why they're having these headaches and stuff. So I'm standing at the, this house is next door to a church and it used to be a Quaker home. I mean, a yeah, Quaker. It was a schoolhouse for girls. It was a field artillery hospital for the war of 1812 for the civil war. I mean, it saw, and then several people, had long lives in it. It's seen several different eras and lifetimes and stuff. Yeah. Um, and 
I was standing. So it's also like a little shotgun house. The hallway goes straight to the back. You can, right when you walk in, you can hook a left to the kitchen or go to the next room, which is the living, which is like the dining room. That's the uncomfortable room. And then there's like a file room and some other stuff. So I'm standing in this room and I'd never, I'd never had a vision. This was my first ever, any of that. It was like someone took a Polaroid picture of the room that I was in, put this man, there was a man standing there, very handsome fella. He had these piercing brown eyes and this slick back brown hair. He was wearing this coat, like a, um, a wooly gray coat with gold buttons on it. And we, we were just, it was like I had this tunnel vision. I was only, I could only see him. Nothing. I couldn't hear anything. Nothing else mattered. I was like zoned into him. He's staring at me and he has this like smug look on his face. Like, why are you here? But also kind of like, Hey girl, maybe, I don't know what he was thinking, but, um, he, I don't know how long it actually was. It felt like a long three minutes. We just stared at each other. We didn't say anything. And then this bubble popped and I was back in this room looking around and I started crying because I didn't understand what happened. I freaked out and I didn't want to be filmed. So I walked outside and I went to the producer, Pat, and I was like, why did I, why did this happen to me? I don't understand. Why did nobody else see him? Why is he staring at me or whatever? And she had been like, well, we've been, you know, I noticed that you've become a lot more clairvoyant. The more that we investigate, you pick up on stuff that other people don't hear unless it's on when we go back and listen to it. So that was it. So by the time we left there, I had already convinced myself I was crazy and that I didn't see it in. Well, a couple of weeks later, the episode airs. And in this episode, they talk about this guy that I'd been walking around the house talking about a lot named Lieutenant Wolf. So several paranormal investigators have gotten information from like on him when they had investigated here. He had said that he was a Confederate soldier. He had been shot six times and died in that house. And they showed this stock picture, just a random picture that they got off the Internet. This guy wasn't the same guy, but they were wearing the exact same jacket. And when I need to say, when I saw this guy, I thought like old money, like my dad's the governor and we throw these parties and I wear pea coats. Like it didn't feel military at all. Right. So when I saw that picture, we got to see the episode before it even went out. So I contacted Pat and I was like, where did you get this picture? That's the jacket I was talking about. And she was like, oh, that those are the original Confederate soldier uniforms. And I had absolutely no clue. So then I was like, maybe I'm not as crazy as I am making myself out to be. No, you probably are, but that's okay. Yeah, yeah. I still like you. Hey, uh, Dave Trader's chiming in. Uh, he, he's asking, if you're approached by a paranormal TV show, would you suggest people uh, to do it or pass and why? Um, I think that just depends on the TV show. I mean, if it was like with Dave Schrader, am I gonna <laughs> no. you're there. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I guess, you know, I, I think what he's kind of leading on to is, is sometimes the producers take over, uh, quite a bit on it, on a show and, and make it look a certain way that it necessarily wasn't. Yes, um, and but I mean that's TV. You 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 got to do something. There's pro, there's pros and cons. I think to it. I think if you're on the right show with the right crew, the right cast, and you're having fun, I mean that the main thing is just to have fun. Don't don't be so serious. But you could get yourself stuck on a show that doesn't do you any justice either. So, I mean, I would if if there's adventure involved, I would probably give it a shot if if the if it's all right. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, 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 uh, I, I think it's a hard, you know, um, I, th I think it's a hard thing because a, a lot of people are out there trying to get shows and there's 24 hours in a day and, uh, you know, to fill up those, the, those time slots, um, there's a lot of people out there that want to do it. And I mean, it, I, I, I loved, I love the RIP files. I look back now and it's a lot, it's, it's not the same as what I do now, but it was a good start for me and it was adventure and I made friends and I traveled. And I mean, I, I had a blast with that concept. I learned a lot, but from, I was very basic ghost hunter. Then I didn't realize that I was intuitive or a me or whatever. Everyone has different terms. I didn't realize that I could connect the way that I did. Um, right. 
<laughs> well, I, I think that's important. I think, you know, like, so a, a lot of people think that I'm just a scientific materialist and I want to do video and I want to do uh, audio and I want to do all that <laughs> stuff. Well, um, that's all normal. That's not paranormal. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're using normal means to try to collect paranormal stuff, which in my mind doesn't work. Um, I'm much more along the metaphysical line. I'm, I'm going to investigate the person. I'm going to investigate their experience. Uh, we're not going to be able to re recreate what, what they experienced, but we can try to understand it better by, you know, like what, what you said, you, you're standing there, you see a full bodied apparition. That's pretty, uh, pretty intense right oh let me, let me tell you the story about him though because it's really cool okay so back back to that guy real quick the very first full body apparition we were standing in the hallway so um overalls he had on a white a long white shirt and he was dark he was black or very dark and when they bring us the picture so it's their resident ghost i want to say that his name was robert he was Either it was either 1920 and he was 22 years old, or it was 1922, whatever. Either way, he was 22 or 20, and he had been thrown in this jail because he had a white girlfriend. So they said that he hung himself, but I he didn't hang himself. That's why he's still there. Um, but I, I'll share the picture with you that you can share with cool the, the diaries. Yeah. yeah. So I saw there. That was the second time I ever ghost hunted, paranormal investigated. So I, I know um, Dave Schrader and I have talked a lot about different shows, TV shows, stuff like that. And, uh, um, you know, a, a lot of times things, uh, you know, they have to make ratings. They have to do stuff. And, uh, and, and Dave has guided me on a lot of stuff. I don't know if you, have you seen the, any of the Halser file episodes? Are you kidding me? Yes. I've seen the Holzer files. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and not watch his show. I, I was talking to a guy the other day and he's like, yeah. So what do you think of the Halser files? I was like, if I was going to do a TV show, that's why I'd do it. Yeah. I love um, it. Well. It would be amazing to go back in because it, the problem with a lot of these TV shows is they got eight hours to go in and they sleep yeah. in a hotel and then they leave and that's it. Um, and for, for what Dave is doing and, and going and, and reopening these, these old files and then going back to the, oh, the those original sure. locations is really cool. Yeah. I, I was watching, I rewatched the ocean Mary episode the other day. I think it's, I think it is phenomenal to go behind somebody that's already done this and like, not just done it, but did it like, did it the right way. Did all the documenting bringing in. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I like it. I, I would love to do something like that to follow behind someone and follow up to see if they actually, in, if they actually solved it or if it still needs solving or if you can solve it. I would love to be that kind of detective. Yeah. Hey, you know, it's kind of uh, moderately funny, I guess. Um, Dave Schrader, uh, when we we met him in Romania, Lynn and I decided to go on one of his trips and we flew in and, and you know, met him at the bus and everything. And he told this story the other day um, on uh, Jeff Belanger's show. And yeah. Uh oh, I might have to plug up. Oh, I'm live. <laughs> Good thing I'm not sitting here picking my nose. Okay, so this one time, I'm gonna tell Dave says tell a story. So this one time at band camp. Just kidding. That's not a story. Hi, Granny. 
Okay, Greg froze. So I'm going to tell y'all a story while we're waiting on Greg. So I'll tell y'all one of my ghost stories. Let's see. Ooh, I got a good one. Hillview Manor. We filmed an episode um, at Hillview Manor, 2014, I think. We were in this room, and I was familiar with this. I watched a couple of the ghost shows that had been here just to understand what I was dealing with, what we were getting ourselves into. This piece of hair is driving me nuts. I'm sorry, guys. I got to fix it. Um, also, I thought that I was froze and that Greg wasn't froze. So that's really good that I don't like sit here and, oh, nice of you. No, I, I absolutely went away. I don't know what happened. I had to reroute myself and get back no, in I here. Thought, I thought that I was gone. So I was like debating on picking my nose and stuff. And then Dave's like, hey, Kenny, you're live. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I'm my nose right now. I was sitting here like doing this and Dave was like, you're live. And I'm like, yeah. I, I don't know what, what is something got kicked off. I think there's a, there's a whole bunch of people doing a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff like this nowadays. So I don't know, a bunch of band. Yeah. With. Anyway, I don't know where we were, uh, where we were the story while you were gone. So okay. I'll, go. Okay. So I like literally said two words of the story. So you didn't miss very much. I was going to share. Oh, oh, help you manage. We went to Hope You Manor for um, an episode. We were in this boiler room where a man had died. I watched, I'd seen the Ghost Adventures um, episode of it. So I was like familiar with what had been going on. So we went into this, uh, <laughs> we went into the boiler room. We were standing there and there was no one, there was nobody around me. I'm a good seven feet away from anybody in the room. And Amelia's probably Amelia's probably about six feet from me. The camera people, our cameraman freaked out that night because I always asked him, do you believe in the paranormal? And he tells me no. Well, that night something grabbed him by the neck while we were filming. I, I got to watch this. We And this isn't the story. I'm just adding this. But he freaked out and was like, who touched me? I know one of y'all touched. And there was nobody anywhere near him. And I was like, nah, you better believe in the paranormal now. You got you on tape. Anyway. Right. So while, while we're there, we're filming, something touches, something touches my butt. It like swipes my butt. It doesn't feel like a, like a perv or anyone. It feels like a kid running past you, like swiping their hand as they run. So I like yelp. And then I'm telling Amelia about this. And I was like, something just touched my butt. This is what it feels like. And Amelia said, was, was that you? Who, was that a, oh, was that a kid that touched Kenna's butt? And as clear as day, a man in her recorder says, huh, yeah, I'm a kid. Like, I still, we still have that EVP. That was the, wow. cool. but yeah, I'm a kid. I even made my husband, I, like, I asked Eric, I didn't tell him any of the story, made him listen to it. And he's like a man saying he's not a kid. And I was like, okay, just making sure. But that was one, that was where I was going when you froze up on us. Well, I'm sorry about that. Sometimes I freeze. Sometimes that happens. Um, <laughs> So what, what would you say was the most impactful thing? Impactful? Uh, yeah. For, for the paranormal, what was the most impactful thing that, that you've experienced or, or seen or heard or whatever that really stands out? Uh, impactful or stands out. Yeah. Something that maybe influenced you to delve deeper into the paranormal. Um, I, th I think seeing the Confederate soldier made me take it serious because at that point I was just a ghost hunter and I was just having fun. I mean, I, of course I wanted to learn, but I was very uneducated with the paranormal and didn't know much about it. So when that happened, I was like, wait, why did that happen to me? And not the people that do see the ghost. Cause I don't see ghosts. That does hair is killing me. Um, that made me start studying like Reiki and energy healing and your hair is easy to deal with. My hair has been giving me problems for a while. I gave up on it. Um, I think learning that everybody, I, I do think everybody has a, has gifts or has the ability to tap into what, what do you call it? The universe, the spirit world, the whatever yeah. you call it. I think that everyone has that I didn't believe in myself. And I think when I started believing in myself, also this Corona is making, I, I want to, should we talk about the premonition or should we not talk about it? Um, I, probably not. Um, but then, can, if we, I mean, it's your premonition. But if I talk about it and it, 
if I say it to a bunch of people, does that make it actually happen? That, see, it? that's the question with the paranormal, right? It is do we create uh, some sort of atmosphere that uh, makes things happen? So I'll uh, so I'll update y'all. I'm not going to tell the name because it's a friend of mine and I'm worried about it. But I think this Corona, since this whole Corona thing, and I've been, I've started meditating again. I, I go through these spurs where if something happens to me and I'm like stressed, I just drop it all and I work on me and then I get back to the meditations and all that type of stuff. But since I've been doing it a lot lately, I'm seeing that I'm connecting with, I did a past life regression or I picked up on someone's past life regression a couple of weeks ago and I didn't even mean to. And it was like a, a boy from, I don't even know the, it looks like he has pilgrim clothing on kind of. He's got like a, what's that called? Oh, uh, oh my God. collar? Yes. <laughs> I could not think of that word. It's yeah. because I'm making you stare at yourself. I know that is very distracting. I keep looking at how shiny my forehead is and, <laughs> and everywhere that my hair is. Um, I had a premonition and I don't even know that it's a premonition. I don't know that it's anything, but it feels realer than the time that I thought my husband was going to get blown, get injured. And then he did. So I don't. Okay. So there's a rock star that I think I might have predicted his death date and it's sooner than later. And we'll just go, if, if it happens, then I'll say, Hey, all of y'all that are on the detective diaries, do y'all know? I'll post it. Yeah. I don't want right. to say his name cause right. I'm scared that I'm going to jinx him. And then if he dies because of me, sure, then, I, I get it. But also if you do feel like you've had a premonition, do you tell, do you tell said person like, Hey, in case you still got the rock star lifestyle, can you just like not, do that or can you I don't even do I tell his friends like hey if you haven't talked to blah blah in a while you should hit him up and say hi or do I so, it, you know if somebody asks me do you want to know or not know well you know it's, it's one of those things is it uh, is it already woven into the skein of your life and it's fate and there's nothing you can do about it or is it like hey don't get on that plane do not get on that plane. And it's, it's, I, I'd like a little hint. I like, <laughs> I like having a plan, uh, you know, so uh, maybe you can, uh, maybe you can change the future. Who knows? I don't know. I don't want to change the future on this, but so, but I did, I did a clever way. I'm not going to say who it is. I made a post that is private that says this, that, it's just documented of this so no one can see it. So if it does happen, then we'll make it public and we can discuss it. I don't want to say it. Oh, I don't. Um, uh, can't. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, wish I, I don't even need to be rude, but I really wish I could trade these people out because this person is, okay, he's probably one of the biggest rock stars he is the biggest. wow. Why, why don't you just stop and change I mean, the subject no, or something? Not, just yeah. like add okay. more fuel to the fire here. Okay, speaking yeah. of fuel, but but that's or, your thought. It, yeah, I'm not gonna say it, mom. Oh, hi, mom. My mom's on here. Mom, you know who it is. You were asking <laughs> about concert tickets the other day. There's my hint. My mom knows. Y'all, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> thanks, Amanda. I love Kid Rock, and I'm going to take Kid Rock, and I'm going to trade places because I would much rather see him kick the bucket than my other friend. So, no, yeah. all right. If you had a camera crew, uh, and you could go anywhere, and there's no, you know, you can't go out in outer space or something, or like to the bottom of the ocean or something. But if you, if you could go to a paranormal location, what would your number one paranormal, what would you like to go and investigate or see or experience? Um, I want to go back. So when I went to Florence last year, I had those, I had, I went on a trip to Europe that had zero thing, zero to do with the paranormal. 
and three different paranormal things happened on that trip. I would love to go back and actually investigate. I was not trying, I was not looking for anything. Then um, I, I would love to do anything overseas, anything traveling. I want to do Waverly. I hear people talk about it all the time. I haven't done it. Um, I have a lot of generic places that people talk about that I haven't done. I want to do Salem. I don't want to do it anything tourist season-y, but I want to do it at some point. <laughs> Right. Well, and, and that's the way, that's the way Poneri Castle was for me. I, um, Lynn and I, you know, just growing up, um, uh, Dracula was one of my favorite things. And uh, as a kid, you know, I didn't know anything about Vlad the Impaler, Vlad Tepes. I didn't know any of that stuff. Right. And to get with Dave Schrader and then go and, I mean, basically we went, we went to Romania, we went to Transylvania and we went to oh, that'd be so awesome. from where he was born to where he was educated, to where he was imprisoned, to where he fought battles, to where he died to his, to his grave. We, we did the whole thing. It was like a, it, it's kind of a real twisted up pilgrimage, I guess. And, um, oh, that, that's what I was talking about earlier. As far as Dave going, Dave had just had a major heart issue and he walked that 1472, I think steps all the way up to Poneri castle, uh, and just sucked it up, basically holding his IV above his head and just, that, that's what I knew. He's, he'd be a great paratrooper that this guy, <laughs> would be a good paratrooper. And, uh, and so, yeah, I, I, I think I did mine that, that was, I, I said, I wouldn't go back, but I think I might even go back. I don't know. I, he, I, haven't I've done a lot of investigations, but a lot of them are private or like small, not you know, you hear of all these big famous places and I haven't got to investigate a lot of them. Um I did well we have a I had a crazy paranormal experience at a castle also. So we had gone to Europe because our family, we had like our lineage traces back to this castle right outside of Florence, Italy called Ferrara. Um and eventually the Catholic church took it over because they became pretty powerful, but under they were right under the Medici family, which owned a good portion of Italy, I think in the Renaissance times. But yeah. in, we went, this Gre Catholic Greta, church, Greta agrees. <laughs> <laughs> um, Italy's the, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I would, I would go anywhere. Were, were y'all staying right across from the Medici? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. We were, Yes. And that was haunted. So I'll just tell you this little Florence part. Um, the first paranormal thing I think that happened, and this might not have been paranormal, but the room, the little bed and breakfast we were staying at is directly across from the Medici chapel. It was built in 1624 or six, 24, 94, 16 something. And in the middle of the night or not the middle of the night, early in the morning, I wake up because I hear water running. So I get up, I go look and my, our shower, our root, whole, whole bathroom is flooded and it apparently been running all night long. Something turned our, we didn't turn our shower on, but it shower was on. The whole room was completely fogged up. I asked the lady if it was haunted and she's like, goodness, no, there's no ghost here. And I was like, oh, okay. No ghost. Okay. Well, so I don't know. We go on this food tour, nothing to do with the paranormal, this awesome food tour in Florence, Italy. And if you ever go back, y'all have to take this food tour. And yes, that's the name of our castle is the day, the day estate family. Yeah. Yeah. Leonardo da Vinci used to paint at that castle. Three Cardinals came from the castle. They had supposedly one of the daughters, I think Beatrice might be the inspiration for the Mona Lisa, which I don't, I don't know. During this food tour, we, um, we visited several different places in Florence and then they take us to this winery, this little um, wine shop. This It has the oldest bottle of wine in Italy. I don't even remember the date now, 18 something. Um, but they said you could go downstairs in the wine cellar and you could look around and you could see the old bottle of wine. And then we did a wine tasting while we were standing in the cellar and the cellar is not like it wasn't very big. It was pretty small. We're standing there and I feel, I called it my spidey sense. The back of my hair stood on like 
the hair on my neck stood up. I got all tingly and I turned around and I watched a man walk through the wall. And I am 100% not kidding. I saw the silhouette. It looked like it was made out of tape. It wasn't a human, but I could see the whole, if it was made out of tape or bubbles, like that kind of material, just sort of see-through transparent and walked through the wall. And I turned to the tour guide and I said, I don't know if you believe in spirits or ghosts or not, but one definitely just walked through the wall. And so he's like, oh no, I don't like ghosts, whatever. He's asking me questions. <laughs> we go upstairs and it's like a little old man, little old lady that have been running this shop since 1950, they had said. So there um, are their family has since 1950. And so they're speaking Italian. I don't know what they're saying. And the tour guide comes over to me and he said, so I just asked them, I told them what you said downstairs and the man, the owner, I don't remember his name. He said, oh yeah, the owner of this committed suicide downstairs in the cellar in 1950. And I was like, oh, well, I just met him. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it was, yeah. That's creepy. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so uh, you know, Shay, Shay Steingas. Yes. Shay Conger. Um, we're talking about, we're all talking about doing an, an Italy trip. And I know, Lynn wants to do an Italy trip really bad. So you, I'm, I know we're going to be reaching out to you to, to add warrants. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's on the list. Yeah. Well, when, when we went to Ferrara to that castle, we had gone, there's several dungeons in there. Um, and we had gone into two. And when I walked into the third dungeon, I had this, I got so anxious. I felt very overwhelmed. I, I started crying out. There was somebody else's energy in there. And I think it was a female, but I could not handle it. And I felt like I was like not suffocating, but I felt like I was feeling claustrophobic. So I had to leave, like leave the entire dungeon, go upstairs and go outside. They had an orange grove on the roof and I had to sit out there and ground myself. That, that castle was so haunted. <laughs> yeah. I, I, uh, Lynn and I got to go to Italy, but we primarily stayed in Rome. Cause I mean, I think we had four or five days. I can't remember, but, um, I mean, you can stay in Rome for a week and just mm -hmm. there, there's so much to do so much to see so much to eat and drink and, you know, bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's incredible. So mm -hmm. I, I have to bring up, um, Corona again. <laughs> COVID-19 killing paracons. Yes. You, you had a great paracon set up, man. I, oh. I had a, I had quite a few people coming in. I mean, considering. Um, I almost, I almost have a date where uh, fingers crossed. I'm trying to get a date this week. I had a date set, but maybe not now, but we're trying. So no. yeah. Uh, yeah. Huh? So, uh, it, it was in Savannah and if there's any town in America that's haunted, that would be Savannah, right? Savannah is my favorite city in the country. Now I have, I live in Atlanta or Fayetteville, but it's like exactly three hours from Savannah. So I've been studying ever since the, I didn't, I started telling you a story and then I ADD on you, I think, but in Savannah, the very first paranormal experience I ever had, and this is what I shared with the RIP files. I had seen Miley Cyrus. This is when she was filming the movie, The Last Song. She had talked about this ghost story about this, this um, bed and breakfast she stayed in. And it was called the 1790 Inn. And there's supposedly the most haunted room. It's Anna's room, 204. And it's about this girl. There's a lot of different stories to her death. Apparently, it was a suicide. She jumped out the second window. The stories as to why she did it change a lot. Supposedly it has something to do with a sailor and, but I don't know the correct story. Um, but that night that we stayed in there and now mind you, I'm scared to death of the dark. I'm scared of ghosts. I don't even like this at this point. This is like 2013 and I had never done anything. Chucky ruined my life when I was five years old. <laughs> Chucky set, set oh bar for my life. I was scared to death of the dark my whole entire life. I would not watch scary movies. So the fact that I ended up on a paranormal TV show was pretty humorous, I, I think. Um, but the, so the night before this all happened, I just started working out and I had a, a Kenna, of course, ripped an oblique muscle somehow. I ended up 
in the hospital, let me tell you why I, rip, why I tore my oblique muscle, because it's really stupid. So I'd been working out, doing a lot of this with the balls and twisting and stuff, and nobody tells you the right form, apparently, or it's just Kenna being Kenna. But I kept thinking I'd pulled something. So we were staying at the 1790 Inn, and I was like, it, I had gone, it was, it was late at night, and I'd gone to the restroom, and I was, did it, I wanted to run back and jump in the bed really fast so the ghost can't get you. Right when I went to go jump into the bed, like mid air, it, I ripped, I like tore my oblique muscle. Wow. Yeah. As soon as I hit the ground, I was throwing up. I was sweating. I couldn't get off the ground. Did the you next, have to have surgery? No, no, I did have to go to the, I went to the ER the next day. So while my sister-in-law was cake tasting, I'm sitting in this field up hospital and finally get seen. We do like, they give me pain medicine. I was in so much pain. So we end up going to, I get over it, take my pain medicine. Um, we go to the bar. Yeah. You know what? Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> I hate him. <laughs> I had to go to therapy for three years. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> Yucky when I was almost nine years old. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How many dolls do you have? Ugh. I got a bunch. Dolls. You say those. Hey, and they're action figures. They're not dolls. They're action <laughs> figures. Big difference. Let's get that. Let's get that right right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, that's what Dave Schrader told me. Oh, oh, well, then it's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just giving you a hard time, Dave. I believe. I believe in you. I believe. <laughs> um, that night, the craziest thing stuff did happen to us that night, though. We had gone out and I had read that at three o'clock, you don't be awake because it's the witching hour and the, ve the veil is thin. And if you're going to see a ghost, like I knew nothing about ghost hunting then. That's what I knew. Ghost, paranormal investigating, whatever. So I was like, OK, this was like this was probably around a little after midnight when we got back in. And by this time, I'm like, oh, I'd set up the whole thing. This is actually a good story. So when we were planning, I picked out the room. And so I started reading up on this on this room and it says don't sleep on the right side of the bed don't sleep on anna's side of the bed women have the type of stuff that happens in the room if it's a couple men have woke up feeling tickled women wake up feeling like pre someone's pushing on their chest pressure um you can come in people have said they've come in to find clothes laid out jewelry thrown across the room um you hear marble dropping even though it's carpet you there's a woman in white um, there's several spirits in the 1790 Inn, but particularly in Anna's room, that was what was going on. And they had some dire, they, they have journals in there that you can write your stuff. So I was reading a little bit of it and then I started freaking myself out. And it said like, don't sleep on Anna's side of the bed if you're a girl, because Anna doesn't like girls and she'll, she'll try to choke. She doesn't try to choke you, but people say they wake up feeling pressure or stuff. Um, right. I was like, okay, I'm not going to, I'm going to make, I'm going to make Amanda my sister-in-law sleep on the right side of the bed. I'm not going to tell her and I'm going to see what happens. So when we get there, there's a bathroom, there's the bed, there's an arm, armoire, 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 whatever that French thing is. And the journals say that it opens up at night. And I was like, Oh, I'm not sleeping by that. I'm going to sleep by the bathroom. And then I was staring at the bed and I was like, wait, do they mean the right side of the bed if you're looking at the bed or if you're laying in the bed? Because that's two different sides. And I was like, crap, I don't know what side to pick. So I decided to pick the bathroom, which was Anna's side of the bed, come to find out. So that night, Amanda's like, if anything happens and you wake me up, I'm going to kick your... Can we say bad words or not? I don't, I don't care. Oh, I didn't know. Okay. She's going to ass. If I... Uh, <laughs> I, th I think you can say that. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Well, I said ass anyway, so... Oh. Anyways, so this is like 1.30 o'clock, 1.30 o'clock in the morning, and I'm scared. I've decided we're going to leave the lights on, the TV's on, it's on SpongeBob, and I'm under the blanket, scared to death, like just my eyeballs popping out, because if you're under the blanket, the boogeyman can't get you, and I had to pray. I told Anna, I was like, look, I was scared. I was like, I don't know why I decided to come here. I'm freaking out. I'm scared. You leave me alone. I'll leave you alone. I just want to go to bed. I had like on my pain medicine. And so I fall asleep. I wake up. It probably 
fall asleep about 1 30. I probably wake up like an hour, hour and a half later. And I'm like, oh my God, I cannot look at that clock because it's going to say three o'clock. And I know that's when, that's when they come out. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how I felt in 2013. Wow. Um, no, the craziest thing happened. I was laying there and I was like, please go to sleep. Please go to sleep. The bed shook like a bull ran into the end. Of, I'm telling you that bed almost levitated. And I was like, what the F I'm freaking out. I sit up and I lean over and I look at Amanda. I was like, that had to be Amanda moving. She is snoring. And I'm like, crap, she's going to kick my ass. Don't wake her up. Ah. So as I talked to Anna again, I'm like, I'm going to leave you alone. You leave me alone. I just want to go to sleep. So I'm laying there and I'm like, that didn't even happen. I'm laying there talking myself out of it. And the bed did it again. And so at this point, I pull the cover over my head and I'm like, please just make it through the night. It's like I was way more dramatic than it should have been, but I'd never done anything like that. So I was so scared. <laughs> at five o'clock in the morning, both of us sit straight up and we are covered in sweat. And up until the day when I have a sweaty mustache, I'm usually not very sweaty. Just zoom in on my mustache, why don't you? <laughs> um, the, we sit up at five o'clock in the morning, we're covered in sweat. It's 68 degrees in the room. And Amanda says, were you walking up the side of the bed last night? And I was like, what? No. And she's like, that's weird. I must've had this ghost stuff to my head. Um, also, when I woke up at three o'clock, I woke up with this, or close to three, whatever. I woke up with this unexplained energy. Like it felt, I had been in the hospital all day long. But when I woke up for that just hour nap or whatever, it felt like I was ready to run a marathon. I had this unexplained energy. So when we wake up the next day, as soon as I see it's daylight, by five o'clock, I'm getting all my stuff and I'm getting ready to get out there because I was just freaked out. I read some of the journals while we're while I'm waiting and a lot of people reported and I didn't see. I only read a little bit of the journal because I started freaking myself out when I read about the cabinet opening by itself. So I was like, I'm not reading any more of this tonight. So the, a lot of people said that they had all this unexplained energy. Or they had people walking up the side of their bed. Everything, no one talked about a bed moving, but the unexplained energy and the walking up the bed, I was like, okay, I'm ready to get out of here. <laughs> my my journal entries in there somewhere. So it's probably as dramatic as my story. <laughs> That's cool. We got a couple of more minutes um, before we wrap this up. Um, is Where can people find you? Are, are you, uh, you got other things? I, I threw your Instagram and your, your Facebook up there and your YouTube. I have uh, the public page on Facebook and then Instagram and the haunted Savannah Paracon. Which haunted is Savannah Paracon, which uh, hopefully we'll get that done yep. early yep. next year. Yep. 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 That was, that was, we were really looking forward to that. Oh, so. it's going to be so much fun. That, yeah. the, the places that we're going to, the places that we're going into and investigating, I've already picked up so much crazy energy or had stuff happen at the Sorrel Weed House. I had, um, they called him the shadow man. I don't think that he's a shadow man, but something whispered in my ear, hey, really loud in one of the hallways. There's, yeah, there's, yeah Savannah's so active. Well, I know, I know we're really looking forward to it. We're excited about it. Um, there's anywhere you read anything about uh, Savannah, Georgia, it's, just um and 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 people that go there uh you know always have stories when they when they come back even the the most diehard skeptics can uh come back with some sort of weird story that they can't explain you know there, there's nothing like savannah to me i don't know any cities that beat it it's like ugh, everything about it i've had experiences in bonaventure at sorrel weed at the davenport house that we're going to investigate at moon river that's why I ended up choosing those places. I tried to make sure to choose places that I knew without a shadow of doubt, there's going to be hopefully a lot of activity. So when it does happen, well, it'll be very worth it. Well, cool. <laughs> uh, this hour went by really fast. I really appreciate you taking time. I know you, uh, you guys were busy today and to be able to squeeze this in, we got to get out of here. So everyone can tune into Jeff Belanger. He's, uh, he's um, coming up next at, at six o'clock, uh, on Facebook live. And you need to go watch that. Cause I think he has, uh, somebody very important from the girls next door, uh, as his, as his guest. So that should be fairly interesting. Yeah. Um, if anybody needs me, you know where to get me. It's the paranormal You got anything else, Kenna? 
Um, thank you for letting me come on. Oh yeah, you're <laughs> welcome. You, we'll we'll do this again. Yeah, I have and, lots of stories to tell. <laughs> and and tell Janet, uh, uh, I'll be calling her. And hopefully, no more premonitions. <laughs> yeah, no more of those. Uh -uh. Thanks. Yeah, I had a blast. Thank you so hey, much. And, oh, one one more question. Are you still there? Yep. Is that a real dog behind you? Which one? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Wow, they're really good boys or girls or whatever. All right. So last thing is uh Kenna's dogs. Hello and thanks, Kenna. Talk to you soon. See you next time.